All right, g'day all. This is my um, attempt to explain my answer to the plus NN injective task. I got a bit stuck during class, but I think I've worked it out. Well, I've worked out a solution, that's for sure. If I run this, it works, um, and I understand why it works. So let's talk through it. Uh, there's likely to be a better solution, of course. Um, so we were given the start intros N and then induction on N, which gave us these two to solve. Um, so we didn't even get past the first one but I've worked out that one without too much trouble. Um, intros to get the, the hypothesis up there, sorry, to get the M up there. Then I'm gonna do a simplification in H, which can do the computation on the noughts, uh, zeros, and turn them into just a single zero. Then I'm going to rewrite on H. So that's taking the zero in um, the hypothesis and turning it into an m plus n i think yes so now i've got m plus m equals m and i just decided that was a more interesting thing to start from so i started from it and things worked out okay so i'm doing that induction on that m now um, there's really nothing else to do there but if i induct on the different versions of m i should find out that the only one that it can work for is when m is zero right that's what we're aiming for here so induct on M and on the zero one, that's easy. Zero plus zero is zero, reflexivity, done. But uh, the second one is the challenging one. So I've got that SM plus SM equals SM. This is the one that can't be true. So I looked up the plus N SM one. Uh, what I wanted to do was do an inversion. I wanted to say, look, there's a spot here where we've got the wrong constructors set up because that's what we have. We've got too many constructors on the left-hand side. Uh, so I did the rewrite with the plus N SM as in suggested, but I did it on the hypothesis um, on H. So by doing it on H, I pulled out one of the S's. And I should say H instead of H, but it's just a too, too long a habit. So now I've got something um, H, which is impossible, because there's a zero, which is one of our constructors on the left, and S uh, other constructor on the right, so I do the inversion on that hypothesis and it blows up. Good, one case down. Maybe something similar to that will work for the second one. So we hit that one and we do the intros again and um, looks like I probably want to induct on M again, so I do. Didn't do any rewrites first, maybe I could have, it might have made things easier. But we do the induction on M, so we got the zero case again, uh, which we're expecting to be the easy one. So SN equals zero, definitely can't be right. In fact, I don't think I even need this simple in H. I think, oh, I do need this simple in H, sorry. So SN equals zero can't be right, but I can't invert on my goal. I can only invert on, on hypotheses, things above. So I do the simplification on H again, the same one I did before, no, different one. Simplification on H to uh, extract out one of those S's, because that's what the plus will do when you're given two things with S's. Pulls out one of the S's. Uh, now I've got in H something that can be inverted away and that blows up. Okay, um, last case here, which is the last part of the uh, induction on M, and I see my hypothesis looks, um, well, <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure how it works out. The I mean, I can see that the inversion here, SN plus SN equals SM plus SM, uh, should pull pull out for me uh, n plus sn equals m plus sn and it did and I went that's very useful but I'm, I'm only half sure of that one so this I guess is the magic step that I'm not 100% sure on this inversion on h because it's constructed it's not just two constructors right it's it's um ah so I guess there must be simplifications happening let me just see if that's what's happening um, so the simplification pulls the S's out of both sides. Yes, now it makes sense. So the inversion's doing the, the simplification first. So let's do that explicitly. I do the simplification and then I do the inversion. But the inversion doesn't blow everything up. It just brings out another um, hypothesis, H1, that I can use. Now I'm going to rewrite that hypothesis using the uh, same theory from before. So I'm rewriting in a hypothesis. And that theory says that um, n plus sn equals s plus blah blah. So I do that once and it pulls the s out the front in h1. I do that again so I can pull the s out the front of the right hand side. And now I'm ready for inversion again. 
um, inversion on H1 because I've got two constructors that are the same, so the two bodies will be the same. And I do that, and I pull out yet another hypothesis that n prime plus n prime equals m plus m. Uh, now that matches brilliantly with the IHN. So all the way through here, I was struggling to get something that lined up with IHN prime. I had things that had extra s's in them all the time. But now I've gotten exactly to where I want to be with the n prime and the n prime matching up perfectly. So if I apply IHN to, sorry, uh, to um, H2, um, it takes away the, it simplifies the right hand side. Okay, so it takes away the pluses and turns them just into singles, uh, which is exactly what I need because now I can do a rewrite using H2 in the goal. Rewrite H2 in the goal gives me SM equals SM reflex flexivity and we're done. Okay, so all the magic disappeared there on my third time around. Uh, the last bit that was magic I didn't quite get was the simplification happening before the inversion, but now that I've worked that out, it all makes perfect sense. So hopefully that makes perfect sense to you. Um, they did say it was an exercise in practice in using in, and the the, the solution, which is long-ish, does use lots of ins, so maybe it's the one they were aiming for. Uh, but regardless, it works, and I explained it. What more can we ask for? That's it for now.